Sunday, which we celebrated yesterday. And what we'll try and do this week is to reflect on the places Jesus might have found himself in in, the, in his last days on earth. Of course, we are aware that it's not possible to precisely say this is what he did on Monday, this is what he did on Tuesday and Wednesday. We will work with what we have. By the time we get to Wednesday, it will be more of a sermon, teaching, but today I'm just introducing the journey that we will be embarking on together. But more so as I continue to call the people of God to prayer, I continue to call the Church of Jesus Christ to present ourselves to God our Maker, Jesus Christ our Redeemer, and indeed the Holy Spirit who is our sustainer. So it is reported to us that by some that on this day, the Monday of Holy Week, three things are likely to be dominant. Of course, Jesus would have done many other things, including eating. But we are told that it is likely that the anointing at Bethany could have happened on this day. Though the Gospel of John would want us to believe that that story happens before Palm Sunday. The other thing that is significant that would have happened on this Monday is the cursing of the fig tree. And the one that most of us remember. It's the cleansing of the temple. Let us focus on the cursing of the fig tree for now and think about how Jesus seems to be suggesting to his disciples that he is disappointed that he has walked up to this fig tree, perhaps hungry, only to find it without fruit. This must have surprised his disciples. Why are you surprised that there is no fruit, Jesus? Because possibly this wasn't the season for figs. But Jesus is disappointed that this tree looks green and beautiful from a distance, and yet it's not able to provide nourishment. Perhaps it reminds us that we as Christians, because this was meant to be more of a parable, a teaching, more than just being angry at a tree, so that the disciples would remember this, as we now do, that it is critical that we are found to be productive, to be fruitful, in and out of season, as Scripture says. That we are expected, therefore, whether we are the church gathered or the church scattered, 
As it is now, we continue to say the church is deployed. It's all over. We are expected to be found productive, not looking all good, green from the outside. But in actual fact, we are not being fruitful. So the first lesson of this Holy Week is that we are expected to remain fruitful, abundant, abundantly fruitful, with good fruit for that matter, not just ordinary fruit, in this season of Holy Week. On this Monday, I am challenging you as I challenge myself. Be fruitful wherever you are. There are no off days. For those who have wanted to look like they were fruitful on a Sunday or on specific days when they are going to a conference, when they are going to a retreat, Jesus saying to us, be fruitful in and out of season, whatever, because you never know when Jesus walks your way to come and pick his fruit. And I believe in these circumstances, Jesus is indeed looking for fruit in us. Fruit of goodness, of righteousness, passions, perseverance, all sorts of fruit, Jesus is looking for it. And indeed, is looking for the fruit of the Spirit. But also the cleansing of the temple, which for me is the reason why I am here today. Next to this baptism font, which comes from our old church and is perhaps about 160 Five years old. Jesus cleanses the temple from all the money changes, the dealers, and so on. And we know for us, it's no longer just about the building because we know that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so, as we journey towards Good Friday, again, the same Jesus who is disappointed with a fig tree that is unfruitful. It's the same Jesus who walks into our heart to look at the fruit of their heart, which is the temple here. And is cleansing this temple now to say, I expect better in this temple. This is not just Jesus who's seated somewhere in heaven. This is Jesus who is in us, who abides with us. And so, in this time, we almost as it were open the doors of this temple and we invite Jesus to come and cleanse us not as violently as is reported there but gently with love allow Jesus into those dark corners those areas that you don't want to show any other person let Jesus cleanse you let Jesus visit those areas of your life and may you and I find grace in this season of Holy Week that as we journey with him to Good Friday, indeed we may be temples that are cleansed, that indeed we may be fig trees that are fruitful. God bless you, family.